and welcome to The Colorful Dinosaur, a personal blog about food, fashion, interiors, relationship, adventures, and mental health. I'm Maddie, the voice and creator behind these videos, and I live with schizoaffective bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. I am launching this channel to normalize my diagnosis, share my experiences, and have fun creating content for the internet. On Sunday, I made dinner for my family at my grandma Diane's house. I cooked a shrimp boil for the first time. The fresh ingredients are onions, garlic, potatoes, corn, sausage, tomatoes, thyme, and shrimp. I got these from Costco and our locally, local grocery store chain, Harmon's, which has the best produce in town. I also picked up a massive amount of Old Bay seasoning from Amazon. This recipe calls for a half cup of Old Bay, plus more to taste, and it really is the key to making the boil so flavorful. And though it's not necessary, I think adding a large can of Budweiser helps everything meld together really well. I thought a lot about what cooking for my family means to me this week. My grandma was often the one who made my brother and I meals during our childhood. We never lived with my grandparents, but my mom had worked a lot, and my dad was out of the picture. So my grandparents, and particularly my grandma, spent a lot of time taking care of us. She would make us delicious homemade meals every night of the week. Beef stroganoff, wieners and mashed potatoes, Mexican casserole, baked breaded chicken, were some of the greatest hits of my childhood. Now my grandma is 86 and slowing down. She doesn't cook as often as she used to, but has always game to host a meal. A few weeks ago, my uncle Bill came back from Seattle for Mother's Day and made steaks. It brought back memories of my beloved grandpa, who has passed away, grilling during the summers. I remember one summer after I hiked from Alta to Park City with my friend Susan, we went to my grandparents' house after and had the best steak of my life after eating nothing but dehydrated food and cream of wheat <laughs> for a week. I have a lot of happy memories of food with my family, and maybe that is why I love cooking so much, putting raw ingredients into something delightful the whole family can enjoy. I like look forward to cooking for myself, but it is nice when someone else appreciates it. I'm grateful for, to be able to live on my own in my own apartment, and part of that is preparing meals for myself and cleaning them up. Meals made for one. I've taken a step back from cooking for myself, mostly making easy rice dishes and sandwiches and Trader Joe's prepackaged meals for dinner, not elaborate recipes from the myriad of cookbooks I own. Tonight has inspired me to get back into cooking. It is an act of self-care to prepare food that nourishes and sustains me. My mental health is deeply tied to food. For my antipsychotic to work properly, I must take it with a 500 calorie meal twice a day. This can be a lot of food, especially at breakfast. It can make me justify eating unhealthy, hello McDonald's, just to hit the 500 calorie mark quickly and not have to physically eat so much. It can take a toll on my body with psychiatric medications already causing weight gain, and because of COVID, I haven't been able to go to the gym to stay active. I need these medications, and the combination I am on helps me get through my days with fewer hallucinations, but the side effects are harsh. They cause a lot of fatigue, and I am unable to work at the level needed to support a corporate job. I've gotten to a place where I can accept that I need to work part-time at a creative arts, arts nonprofit doing social media to, you know, make up the difference between what Social Security disability benefits provide and what they don't. And it's a good place for my mental health. I get to see people and be part of the community. They're very accommodating, and I'm glad I found this job. I was working full-time for the past two years, and it burnt me out so badly. I was exhausted from every day and went home and watched TV as I went to sleep without cooking or doing art or reading or making videos, music, anything that was really beneficial to my mental health. Getting back on social security disability, which has allowed me to work part-time, has been a very positive decision, though I have struggled with its impact on my ambition. <laughs> I graduated from college with two degrees, one in English and one in political science, and I've always been, had the goal of, of being successful at work. Work hard, play hard was my motto. That really bit me badly in 2017 when I had my first psychotic break. Since then, I've always had the goal of getting back into the traditional corporate world and have made several attempts, but nothing has worked out quite as well for me as just taking it easy, working part-time, and living off mostly disability. I struggle with feeling like I'm taking a handout. I am progressive and believe in the social safety net, but it feels like it's there for everyone else, but not for me. 
COVID and the economic relief payment sent to everyone helps ease this feeling and makes it more normal to receive money from the government to live on because of not being able to work. It is hard to accept that I am disabled and I need disability. I struggle with prejudices and beliefs about what being disabled, particularly what being disabled with schizophrenia means. This is especially true when I am working full time and trying to mask my disability as much as possible. At my last full-time job that I worked at successfully, I eventually opened up, not just for accommodations with HR, but for understanding from my coworkers, and it helped a lot. I was glad for their support and honestly not getting fired for revealing my disability status. And I realized that I could carve out a path for myself that looks different from the traditional 95 because of their support, as ironic as that might seem. So much of life is centered around work when I go on dates or meet new people, the question of what do you do invariably comes up. In early 2020, after hospitalization forced me to quit my job and go back to living on my savings and disability, I started a relationship. The person I was seeing believed I could work and was very forceful in letting me know I should work. Though they themselves were not working a steady job. So I got a job. It turned out to be a good decision I do think it helped stabilize me and get some of my symptoms under control with just the regularity of seeing people during a very destabilizing time that was the pandemic. That being said, I don't know if going to full-time work was the right decision. The relationship ended, but my job didn't. I had another hospitalization during this time from a, from a suicide attempt in late 2020. Since then, my mental health has improved significantly. So I have experienced auditory hallucinations every day and live with the delusion that my thoughts are being read. The colorful dinosaur is a way to help me combat this delusion, which is reinforced by auditory hallucinations. By saying things out loud and creating a narrative for myself, rather than having one shoved down my throat by the voices in my head, the voices as clear as someone sitting next to me, but coming from nowhere but the chemicals and electrical signals of my brain, is a powerful way for me to center myself in reality. Well, the shrimp oil was delicious, and this recipe makes a ton of it, so definitely check it out. Make a night of it. Thanks to Grandma Diane and Mom Liz for being there for me. This is Maddie and Tessa Triceratops signing off. As always, roar is a four-letter word. Mm -hmm.